Greetings, fellow settlers. Radamon here. Thank you for tuning in to Farthest Frontier, Episode 8, City of Industry. Uh, so in last stream, we started from scratch. This is only stream number two. And sort of the last few things that happened in the last stream is that we finally got our town center up to tier three, which is probably the biggest jump that the game has. Um, tier one to tier two opens up a few options, but tier three is like full industry. And we got sacked pretty hard by raiders where they burned down a fair portion of the houses here. And as a response, we erected a pretty sturdy external wall. And that's roughly where we ended. Uh, first order of business is right here. I would like to exploit coal, iron, gold, as well as build pastures. So once the, the current tier that we're at, let me show you for the resources. Tier three allows you to get uh, furniture workshops to provide for luxury goods. The two types of luxury goods in this tier are glass and furniture. And glass is going to take us a little bit longer because in order to make glass, we need bricks. And I don't have any bricks. But we can get a furniture workshop relatively early on, but it's it's far less important. What's really important right now is for us to secure iron and brick. Those are the two big ones. Iron's going to allow us to um, upgrade things like the guard towers, which will increase their durability, increase their attack range, and increase their um, range damage and keep us protected. So iron and gold, and you can make your own gold. You can literally just smelt your own gold iron into ingots for, for currency so that you don't entirely rely upon trade and tax. So that's the first order of business. And the reason for pastures is because at some point you will not be able to reliably hunt uh, for the protein and hides of your settlement because there's just not enough game out there to support you. So uh, that's why the pastures. Uh, are we going to put specs in the description for the new PC? Uh, I have that on my website once it's done and built. I'll have that uh, posted. I'm just waiting on one more part. So let's start exploring those resources. So over here we have a clay pit. Um, the clay pit has a clay deposit of about 1300 clay left. And then over here, there's also iron ore nodes. There is gold ore nodes. There's coal. So there's a lot of coal, in fact. Uh, so the sort of western area would be a really good place to start to put uh, the foundry and mine industries. So let's start that up. So if you start to set up an iron mine, you can sort of see where the resources are. And in the overlay, it will show you uh, what you have available in your vicinity. So I can actually put the iron mine like right here. It's physically close enough to the nodes to exploit it. And that's going to be a lot easier to lay out roads. What I'm thinking of trying to do, uh, when raiders come, they typically focus on the gates and not walls. If they, if they focus on the walls, it's because the walls don't have tower coverage. The gates are weaker than walls, so your gates are what is the most vulnerable point in your colony. Now, we can double up the gates to make it a little bit harder for them to bust in, but I think the right strategy for defending against raiders is to have uh, one tower per gate to make the gates less attractive, and then to have a bunch of soldiers ready to be deployed and move to where the raider is coming in. So that's, that's sort of the design idea I'm going to go with, and, you know, it will be somewhat fluid, uh, to adjust to any changes in scenario or difficulty or raiders or whatever. All right, so let's go ahead and get this area uh, nice and flat so that we can put down iron mine. And then while we're at that, I'm going to want coal as well. So we can do coal from up here. Um, actually, the coal mine could be here where the iron mine's going. So that will be perfect. Now, we did have a huge population boon. As a, towards the end of last stream, where we have 51 laborers, and a lot of those laborers are going to be soon to be employed in uh, iron and coal and gold and bricks and all that stuff. So I did just finish mentioning that I wanted a guard tower per gate. So I'm going to move this lookout tower. It's a little bit too late. They're setting it up here, but I'm going to eventually move it to the west gate.
And then once we have a foundry, I can start to upgrade things that require iron to upgrade, like wells or guard towers or fletchers so that we can start making crossbows, you know, that kind of stuff. Oh, another thing that I needed to do is one of the biggest options that you get when you hit tier three is you get uh, preservers buildings, which uses glass in order to preserve berries, root vegetables and fruit. And you also get um, the cooper. So in storage, there is the cooper. The cooper makes barrels in order to try to keep things from spoiling. Uh, it requires iron. But the really important thing with the cooper is you want to uh, reduce the amount of storage buildings that you have so that you're not spreading your barrels out. So in here, in like a root cellar, you can see all the barrels that you can have, and it's a spoilage reduction of 5% per barrel, up to 10 barrels, so 50% reduction in spoilage. So uh, what I'm going to start to do also is to break down the storage facilities that we have that I don't want now that we're going to have a Cooper pretty soon. So that would be at least these two, if not more. Other things that we can do in this current tier is to upgrade the roads from dirt to stone to increase movement speed. So the most important roads to upgrade first would be the ones around industries and storage. And then I eventually will get all the roads up to stone because there's really no reason not to have stone roads everywhere. But the most frequented, most trafficked roads are definitely the most important to you to pave. And I'm going to get uh, at least eight soldiers for now. It will cost more monthly, but it should protect us a little bit better from the raiders that we've been hit with. So at our current tier, we also have to start to plan for extra markets. Uh, before I build an extra market, I would like to upgrade the current market that we have to the next tier, which requires brick, gold, and wooden planks. So I'm going to wait to build, to, to lay out the extra market until I have brick. Hey, Madsen, thank you for the resub. Cheers. All right. This is one of those games that mutes when you tab out. Try to keep from doing that as much as I can. So still waiting for this to get flattened out. Also looks like firewood is at an all-time low. So I'll get another firewood splitter. You can hear all of the roads getting built. So here is what the cobbled roads look like. A bigger bonus than dirt roads. It's worth it, though. Especially given how much stone we currently have. Plenty of stone to be able to afford it. And then it's complaining that I'm running out of storehouses. Uh, let me see if that's actually true. No, I have plenty of room for storehouses. Yeah. I don't know what they're talking about. Oh, maybe because candles were off? I'm not really sure. So this got flattened out a little bit. Let's try to put in the mines. So here's an iron mine. Uh, I'm going to also move the stockyard. 
No, I'm not, because it's too steep. I'll try to fix that. So we need iron and coal in order to make, in order to, to smelt, and then I wouldn't mind uh, mining gold. There's a lot of gold in the hills, and that can help uh, jumpstart our economy, because right now, through markets and taxes, we're basically just breaking even. So that's not a lot of money, income, in order to upgrade the, uh, the colony with the settlement. Hey, thank you for the resub. You want to try this game? I highly suggest that you do. It is a lot of fun. Definitely a lot of fun. Now let's get these roads upgraded as well. And then I also wanted to put in some additional fishing. I don't think that would be a bad idea. Um, so let's see if I can't smooth this out here in order to get a fishery there. And do the same over here. It's too steep, so we'll flatten this out here as well. Knowing that I'm going to get a preservist pretty soon, which allows you to jar with glass, I'll also ramp up the amount of trees that the arborist um, takes care of, adding some additional trees up that way. And we're being raided. 33 raiders from the northeast. All right. Ring the bell. And then immediately move our forces to meet them. And let's see if we can't take keep our numbers down. So what you'll end up seeing, most likely, there is a tiny sliver of wall here that is unguarded by towers. And then, of course, this whole area is unguarded by towers. And what you'll generally see is that raiders will either attack gates or untowered walls. So this area and this area. Fortunately, your own troops can fire arrows through your wall, if by magic. Um, so it's not that big of a deal if it's unguarded, as long as you have enough troops to react to the fight. So we've got some builders and other people fleeing. I believe the towers that I have... Okay, well this one isn't fully employed, but all the other towers are garrisoned fully. They're going to be destroying stuff outside, like fences and the like, and we'll just rebuild those once this fight is over. And you can see the uh, arrow towers are already firing on the raider. So the first spot I want my defenders defending is the north gate, because it looks like that's going to get fir hit first. And you'll see how the gate closes automatically. I don't have to do anything. It doesn't let the raiders in. And then my defenders, who are armed with bows and arrows, and also swords, some of them, will start defending manually. And if you're ever wondering how they're doing health-wise, you can just click back on your barracks and see all the troops. So Bowen and Ivar are wounded, but the group that was attacking to the north is mostly dealt with. And here's exactly what I was referring to. This being an unguarded section of wall. They are attacking it. The thing is, if you tower up everywhere, what's going to end up happening is they will just attack some section of wall anyway. So it might be to your advantage to bait them into attacking a specific section that is easier for you to physically defend. But when they're not attacking a gate, like this location, they spread out amongst the entire wall, uh, buying you a lot of time to react, which is why I think it's better just to protect your um, your gates, and then the, the enemies that end up attacking the wall are pretty easy to deal with because... Um, where'd that flag go? Okay, you guys aren't listening to me at all. Uh, because... They're not going to get through these walls very quickly because they're all spread out and not attacking one target. Whereas this gate's going to fall pretty soon, but I do have troops coming. 
to be able to defend it. So they broke the gate, uh, but my troops got there. And then what I, uh, down in this, because I don't think they're going to get through this wall anytime soon. Uh, what I can do is I can move the troops to start clearing out the ones attacking the southeast. You'll see how that works. They are up. Where they just systematically shred them. The raiders are not uh, particularly intelligent, is I guess my point. Plus, all the most of these raiders are thieves, which don't attack for high damage anyway. All right, so that's all the ones in the southeast, and that's it. I don't see any more. All the ones that were in the north uh, left because I had killed enough of them. You'll buy wood? What an idiot. Oh, you'll also buy planks? Um, yeah, let's try to transfer a lot of planks over, too. Unfortunately, it doesn't have anything I want to buy off of. I need, um, I need shoes and linen clothing. I can start making more shoes. Oh, did he have, uh, leathers? Hides? No. Now let's get some additional cobblers. Yeah, is there any raiders left? I think they all left. Okay, so the few buildings that are lost, a few fences worth like a wood or two, it's really not that big of a deal, and then one gate. Second Traveler. They do have pelts and hide coats for me to buy. Cool. There goes all my gold. Pretty cheap pelts. In fact, uh, I'm going to try to buy every pelt I can. So that I can make shoes. Because that's one of the things, the textiles that I have in the colony, I have not ramped up to meet demand. Oh, sorry, your question would be answered in the details command, not the uh, about command. All right, so village was raided. They killed no one. I killed 25 of 33 of them, and they destroyed three fences and a gate. A much better um, battle after battle report than previous battles. So the tactic worked, in other words. And now my builders are just automatically repairing the walls that got damaged. Very easy. Did we get this smooth enough? Nope. Let's do it again. So the first trader that I want to trade with is gone in... Here, let me just buy stuff now. And the second trader... I will continue to buy your pelts. Buy all the pelts and then transfer the rest of the gold. It's a good looking town. Well, thanks. I hope to make it even better. Given time. So we do have an iron mine now. Let's go ahead and grab ourselves a coal one as well. Uh, this is really bumpy terrain, so I'm going to have to to flatten this out before I build anything else.
relocating these berry bushes to where there's a um, a forger. Because once we get a preservist, uh, preserving berries is going to be a lot easier and it's going to keep it from spoiling as quick. That's the one problem with like berries and fruit and things like that is they spoil really quick compared to root vegetables. All right, any luck up here? We'll see. Fish? Yes, I can get a fishing shack. Great. Stick a road in there, and that will add to our fish income. We've got 20 builders, and they're all employed at the moment. That is how busy we are. So what I really want to do is I want to get away from the bleeding edge of starvation. Uh, like, I constantly only have a few months of food in storage. So that's what I'm really pushing towards. Quit telling me that my stockpiles are full. They're, they're really not. Oh, I need to store honey and wax over there. Okay. Well, I appreciate the warning this time. But only this time. Perfect. Another fishing shack, and we'll start hitting this pond up. I have even more stone, so I'll just keep stoning up the roads that I think are going to be somewhat permanent. You know, the ones that I don't suspect I'll remove. I do like yeah, not everything on a grid system, but it is less efficient. So I have to kind of decide, do I like the aesthetics or do I like the efficiency? But here's the new fisher. Let's give you 160. It's pretty good. And then this guy, he's at 180 now. Get it up to 190. There we are. That should help feed us a little bit better. Uh, slightly. It also looks like we have some waste buildup. Uh, I don't think our waste collector can collect fast enough, so we can also get another night soil composter. As your population grows, I think roughly once you hit about 150, 175 or so, you're going to need probably two night waste at that point. Great. So we have an iron and coal mine across the street from one another. And then I'm going to want a foundry. So what I wanted to do is I wanted to move the stockyard next to it. Ah. Uh. There it goes, it can be moved, and then put a foundry next to that so that there's just a minimum amount of travel in order to get um, things smelted. So the reason for moving this stockyard is, is so um, I can put roads right outside the gate or double gate. That's another strategy that I could employ. Um, more in the west than anywhere else. I could do it here as well. But double gating would look something like this, where just to make it harder for them to get in, you just stick two gates on there and put a wall on the ends like this. 
And it buys you a little bit of time. Doesn't look pretty, but it, it works. It's interesting the raiders go for the walls and not the stuff outside the walls. So the raiders are, are going for the wealth of the uh, of your settlement, which is gold and iron and weapons and things like that. And not they're not going for like the smokehouse to steal a few they're not risking their lives for like some smoked meat in other words or berries from the or, you know forager. So instead of instead of pillaging the easier targets, they're going to go for the the resource rich ones. If you do find yourself um, losing enough stuff outside your walls, uh, you hypothetically could just build walls around your work camps. They're outside your walls, and then like put a tower in there to make it not such a soft target. That would definitely be a, a pretty valid strategy. All right, here we go with the weird little gatehouses. Getting that coal mine going. And then once I have the coal mine, once I have the foundry site, um, I'm also going to want a blacksmith. So there's no point in having iron ore unless you're actually using it for something. So uh, I'm going to want to flatten things out up here a bit more so that I can put a blacksmith and forge my own tools, my heavy tools, my um, weapons. Do I have tools for the foundry? I do. I have uh, extra stockpiled tools that I've purchased. I had already done that calculation in the previous stream. So here's the double gate guarded by the lookout tower. Oh, speaking of lookout tower, I see a bear. I'm going to send my two guards to deal with the bear before the bear kills my fisherman. Don't lose to the bear. They got him. So I still have one heavy tool left over, and the heavy tool for the foundry site has already been delivered. So I did my math, and it's paying off. Man, it is really hard to get water for this uh, bakery. I can't wait until I have iron so that I can upgrade the wells for higher capacity. Doesn't look like I have a lot of queued up trees to harvest from my laborers, so I'll add a few trees to the queue because I see that the logs quantity is dropping. There's a lot of work facilities that are going to require periodic heavy tools as upkeep, like the windmill, for instance, that uses heavy tools. And as you can see, the heavy tool. In this windmill, it has 75% HP on it, um, so it's really important to have uh, one of the first buildings that you build once you reach the point where you um, can make heavy tools to have them stockpiled. So now that we have the foundry, I'm going to just hire it out. I'm going to fill also the coal and fill the iron mine as well so that we maximize in the stockyard nearest i'm gonna allow coal gold iron in there because those are the resources needed in this area and i should start to see iron bars not iron ore but iron bars trickle in i do already have iron ore though Blacksmith. I 
Maybe I'll set it up like... Uh, Hey, not as bad as Frankenstein. Thank you for the reset. Cheers. Things are going well. I uh, thanks for checking in. Now, the other uh, industry that I haven't set up that I said I wanted to, well, besides gold mining. So, probably a good gold mine site would be up here where there's two enormous nodes of gold. But I can actually set up the gold mine here. It's technically close enough, so that works for me. is to set up the pasture. Now, buying cows or cattle is uh, pretty expensive. It's a, it's a large expense to set up a barn. Uh, and it looks... Actually, it looks like I could set up the barn here and there's grazing fodder crop uh, just to the west. So, I'll probably do that once, um, once the blacksmith and gold mine are set up. Still don't have my first iron though. And then after I do the iron, probably the next industry to set up would be brick. A lot of the a lot of the buildings that I'm gonna have to upgrade require gold, iron, and brick to upgrade in some sort of proportion. So if we take a look at the guard towers, for instance, it costs uh stone and iron, gold, and planks. If we check the root cellars, it is brick and gold. The storage houses are brick, gold, planks. Um, the Fletcher is planks and brick. And then also things like large parks can be upgraded as well, uh, improving desirability, which drives up tax. So that's another big one. I'm not really going to be able to um, get the next tier of house until I do set up a, uh, a theater. So that requires clay, not bricks, but quite a lot of gold and other resources. And I'll probably end up putting a theater maybe where that park is. So I'll want to move that park a bit or remove it entirely. Sort of the meta is that um, a theater can... A market has a certain sphere of influence and a theater has like four times the sphere of influence. So you can have one theater uh, supply four markets worth of houses. So the idea that I want to do for this colony, I'm going to not, um, I'm going to keep my populations rather low so that the game runs well. Uh, but the idea that I had was to put a theater roughly around here and then to put another market around here, expanding the walls up to cover it and probably not go beyond that point just because the game starts to get very sluggish if you go any further. Now, is this coal mine complaining? Mm, what is... This mine is out of ore? But they're all gathering ore, so that doesn't seem true. I might need to move this coal mine closer to where the coal is. Yeah, okay. Uh, I think that's what I'm going to do. Sorry, coal mine. And in fact, I'm going to remove the gold site there. Because even though it said it was a valid place to put it, uh, I have my doubts. Here's the black blacksmith forge. Stupid temporary house. Actually, you know what? I don't really care if the temporary house doesn't like the forge so close. 
So I'll put that there anyway, and then I'm gonna put a well here just in case of fires. I'm trying to build in such a way that I can wall this in pretty easily and have it be protected as a result. So that's how I'm designing it, if you're wondering. She buys logs at pretty inflated price. So even though I really do need my logs, I will sell some to her. So the blacksmith forge is waiting for iron to be smelted and the iron smelter is waiting for coal to be harvested. I just filled this coal place full of people. So we should start to roll in coal in just a minute. Also, I'm gonna harvest the trees around here and the stones so that if we do decide to wall this in, it's easier because there won't be trees in the way. There we go. We are producing iron. Finally. And then once we have the iron, the blacksmith will start to make heavy tools, tools, and weapons. Uh, those are really inexpensive hides. That was a steal. I love it. Oh, how much are they selling tallow for? Two? Yeah, I'm going to buy some tallow as well. And you'll start to see the upgrade arrows. Now that I have some iron, I'm going to be able to upgrade um, different facilities. Depending on how much gold I have. So here, you can see that the hunter is able to be upgraded. And that adds additional item recipes and increases the durability of the facility. Uh, a Wells can also be upgraded, and that's actually going to be the first upgrade I make because the bakery relies upon water from the well. So, my first iron is going to a well. And it makes the well deeper so that its uh, water source is a bit better. Uh, 11 people? Sure. Why not? I haven't solved our food crisis, so let's add more people. That's surely to solve the food crisis. Am I, am I right? I'll just employ those people as gold miners. <laughs> now that I am starting to get iron, I'm going to open up the blacksmith forge. And I want to make five times more tools than weapons and twice as many heavy tools than weapons. I don't need that many weapons.
Alright, I will say the next priority for me is probably get bricks and glass. It's those two industries that are going to be more important. I'm going to hold off on the cattle because I think it's going to be a while until I'm able to buy enough cow to even bother with a pasture. But bricks will be immediately useful. So here's a brickyard. I just have to be careful putting the brickyard too close to the, um, the houses to the east because it would upset them. Hey, how's it going, Tumbling Satellite? So the travel time at the gold mine sucks, but we're working on a road to it. And that should help with the travel time quite a bit. Oh, there's the dirt road. And then as soon as I have the stone, I'll get a paved one. Maximum travel time. Have I checked uh, Song of Six out? Yes, I have. And I've also watched uh, Trust and Play a bit of it as well. You're hooked on it? Yeah, it, it's a good time. What sort of sieve are you going with? Like, what is your, um, your origin, people? Kryptonians at 5k pop. 5k pop's pretty good, right? There we go. So here's the improved well, and it has more water than the base ones, and I'm going to upgrade the other well next to the uh, bakeries, because the bakery just uses so much water. Oh, we have uh, some compost. I'm going to start adding compost up in our flax fields because they've fallen behind in terms of fertility. The wheat fields look pretty good. Oh, look at that travel time. 18% from like 90. I would say that's a bit of an improvement. So the brickyard, does it fit here yet? Yes, it does. Just a little blizzard. And you know what I think I'm gonna do? I am gonna go over to the Fletcher Oh, it requires bricks. Okay, so let's uh, let's start upgrading our hunting sh cabins. That will help to source more more food. I've got tons and tons of grain. 
I did just ramp up the amount that the windmill is milling by hiring a second miller. And then also upgrading the wells, as you can see, means that these wells aren't tapped and dry, uh, which is good for the amount of bread that we can make. I'm also out of housing, though. I have noted. How do I like the farming's complexity? That's a really good question. Uh, I actually like the farming complexity, but then some of the mechanics of farming, how farmers don't prioritize their own fields over the community's fields, I don't like. So you can have farms that are constantly late harvest or not sown or neglected. And it's really annoying to try to fix that and to streamline it. So I, I think the crop rotation mechanic is really cool, but I do not like that the farmer crop sharing or farmer not belonging to a specific farm mechanic. If I had my way, a farmer would um, make sure that their own farm is done first, meaning that they schedule themselves to be at their farm slightly before the work has to start. And then once the work starts, they complete it, and then they're freed up to work other farms. And then if other farms are, are worked, they're freed up to just be general laborers. That's how I would do it if it was up to me. And that's not currently how it works at all, which means that most of your farmers stand around doing nothing a good portion of the year, uh, which is annoying and then they also don't prioritize their own farm fields which is also annoying so there's a lot of there the crop rotation mechanic is really cool but then the actual sowing and harvesting is not cool like at all room for improvement yep yeah. yes indeed I think we'll see that in a second here. Uh, so we're on. So you'll see here in this turnip field that the farmers just all of them everywhere flood this field. So this is supposed to have two assigned workers and we already have more than two workers here, right? Because they borrow from other fields. Um, which then means those workers that are supposed to be working other fields might not get to those fields in time. Like here, there's five assigned workers and there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight workers currently working. And sometimes I'll see even more than that. Which the net result means if they're stuck um, removing weeds from this field, that means that they might not plant the clovers in time. Oh, yep, that's exactly what's happening here. This is a clover field. I don't see anyone planting the clovers because they're in the adjacent field. Uh, even though they are not assigned to work there, they're in the, they're in the adjacent field uh, pulling weeds. Despite the fact that there's basically no weeds to be pulled. So it's like, what are you even doing? You're not assigned to this farm, right? And the amount of micromanagement to correct for that behavior is just infuriating. So I just kind of let it be despite its inefficiencies. But this is a perfect example where this field here was supposed to soak um, clovers like a whole month ago, and they just haven't because those farmers are else elsewhere working on some other farm. Isn't the solution to start all fields at the same time? No. Because if you do that, um, and you don't stagger them, then your fields won't even get started. Because farmers don't like, they don't, uh, uh, they don't prioritize their own farms. That's what I've been saying, is they don't prioritize their own farms of their other, other farms. So think of it as like a general pool of all farmers. And if you don't stagger the crops, um, you'll just have a ton of farm fields just completely get neglected. Which is unfortunate. Like, they're just standing around. They're not even farming anymore. They're unable to work. 
despite the fact that I, I'm sure there's work to be had. So, yeah, that, that would be my complaint. It's like the workforce allocation for it. It's just weird. So here's an upgraded uh, Hunter Lodge, and now they're using animal traps. Um, so the yules should be a, a, a bit, which is useful. And then this brickyard is almost done. I'll prioritize it. And then I do have enough gold to get the other hunting cabin up as well. Sounds like a lot like the issue in Banished. Yeah, it is basically the same issue. But don't worry, they've only had like uh, 15 years to fix it, right? When did Banish come out? <laughs> Shots fired. Thank you for tuning in to Farthest Frontier, which originally streamed live on Twitch March 7th. If you have any feedback or questions for me, let me know in the comments below. If you'd like to catch a live stream of mine, Rodamont.com has my stream schedule and countdown timers to upcoming streams. If you'd like to join my gaming community, Rodamont.com also has a link to Discord, as does the description of this video. Thank you so very much for watching, and a special thank you to my Patreon patrons, Twitch subscribers, and viewers like you that support the channel and made it all the way to the credits. Thank you so very much. I hope to catch you next episode or an upcoming stream. Farewell, my fellow settlers. 